Hello, welcome to the Freckled Cottage. If you're new here, welcome new friend. My name is Cherie and I'm the owner and creator here at the Freckled Cottage. In today's first project, we're taking these wood round ornament blanks that I got from Amazon and transform them into cottagey rustic ornaments for the tree in my vendor booth. I'm using DIY's white swan to put two even layers of paint on each of the wood rounds. At first I paint only the front side, but eventually get around to painting the back side as well. These are going to be double sided ornaments. Next I'm selecting some transfers from both IOD's Candy Cane Cottage as well as the Holly Glen transfers. Once the paint is completely dry, I apply the transfers. I had wanted to use IOD's Kindest Regard stamp on the background of the rose floral transfers from the Candy Cane Cottage, but I forgot to do the first one. So out it comes and I pause applying transfers to do some stamping. I also had some thin ornament circles from Dollar Tree that I wanted to use up, so I stamped those as well. And once the ink was dry, I resumed applying the transfers. In retrospect, I wish I had applied perhaps the wood plank stamp on the background of the Holly Glid transfers as well. Oh well, there's always next time. Once the transfers were applied to the larger wood rounds, I used DIY's Big Top to seal them in. I have these pretty Christmas napkins and I wanted to try a little decoupage with them. When using napkins for decoupage, be sure to remove all unprinted layers of the napkin. It can be a little tricky, but you want only the single printed layer to decoupage with. So I used DIY's liquid patina in clear to apply squares of the napkins to the Dollar Tree rounds directly over the stamped image. I really like how you can see the stamped image through the napkin. Once dry, I use this finger sander to remove the excess napkin from the ornament, being sure that it is completely dry first and to pull the sander in a downward motion so as not to tear the paper from the decoupage surface. Used an X-Acto knife to remove the excess napkin from the ornament hanger hole. On the back side of the Dollar Tree ornaments, I wanted to add an alternate design. I decided to use IOD's Winter Adornment Stamp, and I used the black Versafine ink again. The edges were a little too clean looking, so I got out my Tim Holtz Distress Ink Pad in Vintage Photo, and used an ink blender to apply it to the edges of the ornament all around.
I used the same ink and blender combination on the front side of the large wood ornaments as well. I loved how this gave the ornaments that grungy, vintagey look. On the back of the Holly Glen ornaments, I also used the winter adornment stamp, this time with the vintage photo distress ink. I experimented with using a brayer to get an even impression, but it didn't work so well, so I went back to the original press the stamp with your fingertips technique. For the vintage rose ornaments, I used another of the winter adornment stamps and the black ink. For project number two, I have this old wooden box that I got at an estate sale last week. I thought it would make a perfect tree stand. I'm using DIY's White Swan to put an uneven and incomplete coat on the entire box as I want the outcome of this piece to look very rustic and vintagey. Next step is to apply some lettering and I'm going to go with IOD's typesetting stamp to spell out Merry Christmas. I'm using a thin mount, but it's not whole, so I have to do the word in sections, but also because I need to use the S twice.
You might be able to see here how I'm using the thin mount. I'm lining up the corner of the thin mount with the corner of the box so that when I go to lay the ink down, I can just line up the corners again for perfect placement. I'm also going to place this cute little Santa in the middle, so I'm using him right now to make sure that the lettering is placed correctly. I think this stack of gifts will look super cute sitting behind Santa, so I'm going to apply that first. On the box, there's a pretty big gap in the planks, so I'm going to cut Santa's boots off and apply them separately. Otherwise, I'm afraid that the transfer will break in the wrong place over the gap. This worked perfectly to make sure that he wasn't off kilter. I then used a fine grit piece of sandpaper to give the entire front of the box a little bit of distressing. Finally, a coat of DIY's Big Top will ensure that the transfers and ink are all sealed in. I actually Big Topped the entire piece because the paint also needed to be sealed. I really hope you liked today's Christmas flips. I really love how these ornaments and tree box turned out. Let me know in the comments which piece was your favorite. The ornaments were a labor of love, but my heart is on the tree box. Thank you so much for watching today. If you liked today's video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you have like-minded friends, be sure to share it out. Check out previous content and also subscribe and comment to support my new channel. Oh, and turn notifications on to ensure you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. Find time to create, and Merry Christmas!